Thank you for joining us tonight for the Summer Creek and Southside Flow Transfer Station Virtual Community Design Meeting. If you have questions now or during the presentation, you, you can put them in the chat at the bottom right-hand side of the screen. We will take those questions first, and then we'll take in the call of users. And if you want to go to the chat right now, the link to the project page is there, and you can copy that. And I am going to pass this to your project manager, Susie Abbey. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to start with some introductions and then do a project overview, uh, go through the project area, and then walk you through some frequently asked questions. So your project team includes myself. I'm the project manager. My name is Susie Abbey. And my phone number is 817-392-8209. And my email address is suzanne.abby at fortworthtexas.gov. And our engineering design consultant is Frisa Nichols and Olivia Kurz is also on the call today. So why are we doing this project? This project is one of two in this area that will supply higher pressure water to new development in the Southern part of the city. This will increase the level of service to customers. Part one of the project is the Southside 4 booster pump station and hydro pneumatic tank, which is under construction at 5800 Stewart Feltz Road. And this is the link to the project page for the booster pump station. The project we're talking about today is for a transfer station. Uh, it is part two, and it will support the operation of the new pump station and will transition homes and businesses in the area to the new pressure plane created by part one. This Summer Creek Drive and Southside 4 flow transfer station project includes new water lines, valve improvements, and a new flow transfer station. So the project area is bound by Cookstown Lane to the north, Summer Creek Drive to the east, Fogata Lane to the south, and Cavana Drive and Chisholm Trail Park Way to the west. Summer Creek Middle School is three blocks to the north of Cookstown. The project is in Council District 6 and will impact the Panther Heights Neighborhood Association. So the design phase calls for a pressure plane valve near Cookstown Lane, as well as five proposed water lines and connections within the project's boundaries. More specifically, um, this is the location of the pressure valve at Cookstown Lane. Um, we have a proposed eight inch water line um, along Rancho Verde Parkway from Jace Jameson Lane to 150 foot east. We have another eight inch diameter water line at Cavana Drive from the north end of the street to 500 feet north through the Encore right of way. There is a proposed 12 inch water line at Summer Creek Drive right of way from Posada Lane to 350 feet north to the Encore right of way. And then another 12 inch water line at Summer Creek Drive right of way from Fogata Lane to 650 feet north to Posada Lane. Um, finally, there's an eight inch water line on Fogata Lane from east of the dead end to 150 foot east. So what is a pressure plane? A pressure plane is an area of the city that operates within a certain elevation range to maintain a constant water pressure. This project is in the south side three pressure plane and the south side four pressure plane. The project will transition parts of the Panther Heights Neighborhood Association area and McPherson Village Development from the Southside 3 pressure plane to the Southside 4 pressure plane. Areas transition to the new pressure plane will see an increase in water pressure. The water system pressures are expected to increase 10 to 15 PSI in the existing development areas within the Southside 4 pressure plane. All of the Southside 4 pressure plane will see pressures ranging from 40 to 80 PSI, which is typical service in the city of Fort Worth. The flow transfer station will be located in the Summer Creek right of way in a 31 by 35 foot area east of Fogata Lane. 
The flow transfer station maintains water quality in the area by transferring a continuous flow from the south side four plane to the south side three plane. And the flow transfer will also keep the water moving and fresh and will stabilize water pressure in the area. The part one booster pump station is just south of the Sun Country elevated, elevated storage tank near the intersection of Stuart Feltz Road and Stuart Feltz Road. Construction of part one is expected to wrap up by late fall of 2020, 2022. This particular project is still in the design phase, and we expect to finalize the design, advertise for bids, and select a contractor by fall 2023. We will host a community construction meeting after we have a contractor on board. To get more information, you can go to www.fortworthtexas.gov and type in the project number 103-116-2 in the search bar on the homepage and then click on Summer Creek Drive and South Side 4 Flow Transfer Station. To get project page updates, you can scroll down to the bottom of the Summer Creek page and click on subscribe to this page. The link to this meeting video, the project map, and the project summary and frequently asked questions will be linked to this project page. Once again, here is my contact information. My name is Susie. My number is 817-392-8209. My email is suzanne.abby at fortworthtexas.gov. If you need to report an emergency or non-emergency, you can call 817-392-4477 and select option one for water main break, sewer backups, 24 hours a day. Or from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., uh, you can talk to somebody in the call center. You can also download the My Fort Worth app from the App Store or Google Play. You can report sewer overflows, leaks, and water main breaks, missing or broken meter lids, water theft, water violations, no water service, water pressure issues, and other sewer concerns. There are other ways you can make a report. You can text hello to 817-835-MY-FW and type in one word like street light out and the request will go directly to the specific department or the, to the specific team or department for a quick response. Or you can go online to this link, scroll down to the report online easily tab Scroll through the topics and select the one that fits your situation. For example, a water pressure issue. You can click on that and in the street address, then follow the prompts. Thank you, Susie. Okay, David or Linda, I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Sally, thank you so much for resetting this for us so we could ask questions. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I think David has a few questions. Um, he's a lot more well versed in this area than I am. I think he's muted. David, I hit. Um, I unmuted you. Oh, okay. Thank you. There you go. Uh, okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, and I see we have a couple other people on the line too that I don't know if they belong to uh, Panther Heights or over in that other subdivision. Um, but, uh, thank, thank you all for taking the time to set up this meeting and go over this project with us. Um, thank you, Olivia for <laughs> attending. Um, I, I just want to be sure I only have a few questions. I want to be sure I understand the project. It's, it looks like it's broken down to 2 phases. The 1st, 1 being the, the hydro pneumatic tank and the booster pump station. And then do I understand this correctly that all the uh, piping that you're showing that the 8 inch connections and a couple of 12 inch lines and a flow transfer station, that's all going to be part 2 that is still in design. And the plan is to get a uh, advertised for bids roughly fall 2023. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, um, and and so. 
Panther Heights, there was a map, Susie, that you had pulled up that was, uh, oh, help me out with the colors here. Was it purple and green? Yeah, so that, um, pan so it looks like Panther Heights is, is essentially being kind of divided between these two pressure planes. And is uh, all of Panther Heights right now on three and then with this project what's over in the purple is is essentially four that's right so this the part one of the project creates the south side four pressure plane that doesn't really exist right now and so this part two extend it extends it to all the necessary areas okay is that portion down there at the bottom where that flow transfer station and I, I don't know, help me out with that. I'm thinking that flow transfer station is sort of like a, maybe a pressure reducing valve. And I'm, I'm saying that because the, the information is that, you know, it's going to be a higher pressure for the new pressure plane that's developed versus uh, pressure plane three that already exists. Yeah, that's, that's the type of valve that will be in there to, to allow that transfer of flow. Okay. So there's a there's an eight inch line that looks like for connectivity and then that flow transfer station and then a 12 inch. So I'm guessing the 12 inch is probably uh, closer in the line to the uh, booster pump station and then coming out of that flow station, that eight inch water line. Is that still in pressure plane four or would that be three right there on Fogata Lane? Olivia, I may have you answer that. I want to say, is the 12 inch line what? Yeah, so um, I can answer that. <clears throat> so what we're doing is we're essentially, there are some gaps in the system because it's all served by in the South Side 3 system currently. So what we're doing is basically filling in the gaps where there are no water lines and we're looping in those water lines so that all of South Side 4 is looped together. So Fagata Lane, um, there is an eight inch line that ties into an existing 12 inch along Fagata Lane. And those right now are both South Side 3. What we're doing is we're taking um, that existing 12 inch and we're keeping it i'm sorry we're moving that existing 12 inch to south side four and we're adding a new south side three 12 inch line that will take any flow delivered out of that south side four line so fogata lane is a a um, south side four eight inch water line that feeds the pressure sustaining valve in the flow transfer station and then any flow is delivered out of there into the new 12 inch line on the South Side 3 system. I see. Okay. So I, I was looking at it. I think I had the flow reverse, but that makes sense. Um, for phase two, I, I heard you say it's still in design. So is it premature to talk about any kind of potential street closures? Would that come up later? Um, that the one area that I think is really congested is there's a cul-de-sac at the inch of Rancho Verde Parkway where it, it actually joins in with Summer Creek. And that, it, <laughs> they opened that up, I guess, a couple years ago, and that has just gotten crazy, the amount of traffic that goes through there. So if you're not aware of that, that's a, and, and I don't know what it re would require for um, construction activity to pipe in and join that new eight inch water line with whatever existing line is there. I don't know if it's in the street or right away or whatever, but that's a busy area right there. Am I allowed to share my screen? I do have an exhibit that shows um, where lanes, we, we don't have any road closures. I cannot share content. Unless you make me a presenter, okay. Yeah, I just passed it to you. Thank you. Okay. All right, let me know when you can see my screen. And I apologize if this comes through a little small. 
Um, just first off, note that north is to the right, so it is sideways based on how we normally view maps. Um, David, I believe, can you see my cursor? Yes. Okay, so this is the cul-de-sac you're referring to, and then this is the roadway that was opened up recently between Summer Creek Drive and Rancho Verde Parkway. Um, the areas we did try to place the water lines outside of pavement as much as possible, but just because the water lines themselves are outside of pavement doesn't mean the contractor won't need to close some lanes down to fit their equipment in there and actually make um, make these connections and build these lines. So while we don't anticipate a full road closure in any location, uh, we do anticipate a couple of areas where they would temporarily close a lane. Mm -hmm. um, so this entrance into McPherson Village is one of those locations. We don't anticipate impacts in the intersection based on where the records show the water lines to be. Um, that's of course not the end all be all because we never know where water lines actually are until we dig them up, but the best we can, we don't expect any impacts in this intersection. Um, so this highlighted blue area is where we anticipate a temporary lane closure. It'll be reduced to a one-way traffic on the north side um, entering the subdivision, but there are two exits to the north of the subdivision that can be used um, right. as right. alternate exits. Yes. Um, okay. And then this is another location crossing this Encore easement. We are in an attempt to reduce easement acquisition. We are in the right of way um, here, but we are very close to the pavement in this location. So a flagger, because this is a primary entrance from the north, a flagger will be set up here for two-way traffic um, for, for entrance and exit into the Panther Heights subdivision here. Okay. Well, good. Looks like you've given some thought to all of this before, so that's great. And so we we won't see any fluctuations in our pressure until you you line up a contractor for phase two and 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 they take off and and uh, start putting in pipes and then. Um, would there be any sort of um, interruption in service or should we and or do we should we have expectations of any sort of uh, fire hydrants that you might have to open up and flush water lines with or is that all going to be determined later basically about the clean the lines would be put them in service um, Olivia, do you think there, uh, so I think that this area allow, allows, uh, some of the work allows for looping, but it should be, do you anticipate, Olivia, that they could see an interruption of service? The only time they'd have an interruption of service is um, if a valve cannot be operated. Uh, we do try to set these up so that, um, areas are can be backfed and basically when a small area is isolated it can be backfed and so you wouldn't see an interruption of service um, but i do know over time sometimes valves get a uh, stuck um, if they're not operated regularly um, so we don't anticipate an interruption of service at this time um, but the city does go i believe they do go in and check their valves before would they try to isolate them Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. I think that was all the questions that I had. I don't know if anybody else had, had some questions or issues. Linda, did I you have, have any? Question. No, ma'am. I think he has covered everything for me, and that's why I insisted on him being here. <laughs> okay. He knows what we're talking about, so. He's very mm. helpful in this instance, but um, we're thankful that uh, you were able to coordinate this okay. for us. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. So this is Donlin Ruffin. I'm an <clears throat> excuse me, member of Panther Heights. And I tried the WebEx and it says the password is wrong. I finally tried on the phone and it appears to be working. Is there anything being shown on a screen? 
Well, uh, we did show some things on the screen. We we shared a, a the presentation, which you should be able to see on the website if you have an interest in seeing the full presentation. And then we had a map of the traffic control during the project. Okay, so you showed the same stuff that's already available in the other uh, uh, the, the maps and the pipes where they're going to go and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is the, is the password summer or am I typing in the wrong password? Can anyone tell me? What we sent out, um, I know Linda, I sent it to you, that was the correct password. Now, the meeting we had prior to this, we did have an issue with the password, but this time it, was, it should have worked for you. If you were looking at the August 10th mailer. Yes. Go ahead and give me your name. Um, give me a favor and put it in the chat. We can't put it in the chat, can you? I can't put it in the chat, no. Okay. <laughs> That's the can key. You, um, Sally, I can, I can email that to you, Sally. I can give you his name. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks, so. all. That's it for me. <laughs> okay. And, and Don Lynn, I can send you the link to everything so that you Is can- Is it the same as the previous links, um, Linda? It is, but David asked some questions, so it has a little more information in it, so you would want to see it. Okay, great. There's a little more information than last time, but it is basically the same information, uh, but Olivia offered a little more additional uh, information on the road, possible road interference. Okay. okay. So, I, so, Linda, since you're here, I do want to ask you a quick question, and, I, and I'm asking this on behalf of everyone else who's texted me who said they couldn't get in. Is the password summer? I didn't have to use the password because I have WebEx on my computer. Me too. And I don't know why it didn't work for you. I'm sorry. Okay. That, that is one of the concerns in the past, so you don't know what to deal with in the future. That is one of the concerns with city-generated meetings that sometimes people can't get in. Now, granted, a lot, a lot don't want to get in, but the ones who do and they can't, then they, they kind of just give up. So. Okay. All right. Double check, and that password um, was summer. But yes, I understand. We've uh, we've had some trouble with Teams as well. Okay. Okay. I got right in. This is my first time using WebEx, and I didn't have to <laughs> put in a password. <laughs> I don't know. Some somebody spoon fed me, I guess. Yeah, it, it isn't making me. I, I, I tried without it. I get... said no. Go ahead. It's a video up on the project page um, by, I'm going to say Thursday at the latest. It's going to be a YouTube video and uh, actually if you guys want to do that, subscribe to the page. If you get on your project page, you go all the way to the bottom and it says subscribe to the page, you'll know when I load the video. And I'll, I'll, send, I'll send it to you, Linda. Okay, thank you. And I'll, I'll, I'll share it with group. everybody. I'll share it with everyone so they can get to it. Thank you. And I, I might add in this information packet that was sent out about this meeting today, uh, it says that there'll be another community construction meeting after you have a contractor on board for phase two. So there will be another opportunity I suppose for Panther Heights or people who are affected by this to um, attend a meeting and ask questions. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And you know, if you have any follow up questions, you can always reach out to me. You can email or call. Okay, thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Susie. Yeah, really, really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Absolutely. Everybody. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. All right, Olivia. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks.